Good morning and welcome to Reverend Darren's Shed Talks. I'm here this morning in a beauty, it's a cold one this morning. <laughs> uh, get your thermals on Middleton. It's a frosty, must have been a frosty night. But I'm here in prayer this morning. And my Bible just seemed to open on Isaiah 43. And my eyes just fell upon verse 18. And it says this. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? One of the things we've been talking about as a dispersed congregation is what's going to happen when all this passes? What's going to happen? How are we now going to be church because of what we've experienced during this time? This time of isolation, this time of lockdown, and it's a very different experience for, for different people. But as we come together as the gathered people of God, at the moment we're the dispersed people of God. But when we come back together, what does that mean? How are we going to do church? You know, for me, Jesus calls us into relationship. And religion is a vehicle in order to carry us into that relationship. Religion is not, for me, an end in itself. It should be a window, a window that opens into a bigger vista of possibility with God. And so often we do things because we do things. And in a previous post, I talked about Mary and Martha. And it's easy just to do. You know, we have this spirituality of doing in church so often. And when we take away the doing, we don't, we, we don't know who we are. We lose our sense of who we are and our identity because so often doing becomes its own spirituality. A spirituality of, of doing and without it, our spirituality seems to be non-existent when we can't do. We have a real difficult time of just being. I'm terrible. I can't sit still for more than two minutes. It's a real, it's a real discipline for me to sit and just breathe and meditate on God and God's word and just to breathe the Jesus prayer as I did in my previous Shed Talk and, uh, and just be. But these mornings are beautiful because it allows me to just be and I hear those, can you hear them? The birds singing in the background and my dog playing around the back of the shed. And it's just a wonderful time of being. But God here quite clearly says, I am doing a new thing. God's always doing new things. You know, I look around the garden and it's beautiful. Um, there's some gorgeous flowers there. And, and everything's budding and, and starting to spring forth. God's doing a new thing. This is about new life. This is an old life. This is new life. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I have come that they may have life and have life in all its fullness. We've been talking about um, yesterday's manner. I had a conversation yesterday about yesterday's manner. Not going back to that which was given yesterday. But, you know, God said to the, the Israelites, collect fresh manner every morning. You know, and if you keep hold of it too long, it'll just go mouldy. Fresh manner. God's doing a new thing. So my prayer this morning is, is quite simple. What is God doing amongst us, even in these most desperate of times? And our prayers are with the NHS. Our prayers are with those frontline workers. Our prayers are with those who have lost loved ones. Our prayers are with those who are suffering. Absolutely. But what is God doing amongst us? What is God doing amongst us? And it's going to be a new thing. And the last thing that we should be doing when all this is over and normality, whatever normality is, resumes. 
we need to really ask the question, are we going back to yesterday's manner? Or are we perceiving the new thing that God is doing? The new shoots that are springing forth. The life that God is bringing to us. Are we going to just get back on that treadmill of doing, doing, doing? Or are we going to just not get on it at all and just say, look, let's be still and wait on God. And perceive what he's doing. I'm going to read those words again. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. This says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to say, do not remember the former things, even though they were mighty. And here, clearly, he's talking about the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. Even though that was mighty, a mighty act of God, he's saying, don't remember the former things. I've done that. That lovely phrase, isn't it? Been there, done that. God's been there, he's done that. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. It's as if God's getting his church ready, his bride. That's a better term, isn't it? Church comes with so many connotations of organised religion, but the bride, his body, is about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Father, ready our hearts for what you're about to do. I'm getting quite excited about it about where you're taking us, where you're leading us. I didn't expect it. No one expected you to be leading us in and through this. But here we are. And God, you are with us. Lord, we just pray that you will be with, with us as we journey in isolation and lockdown. We pray for NHS workers. We pray for the frontline workers, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, those who are mourning. We pray for those who are suffering. Loving God, be their strength, be their peace, be their rock in this time of trouble. For those who are, Lord Jesus, seeking you at this time, we pray that, God, you would steady our hearts, you would focus our vision, and that we would see you clearly. That we would perceive what you're doing as it springs forth that we wouldn't consider the former things, the things that have been, because God, quite clearly, you're doing something radically different. And so we give you all the glory. The glory to your name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen, amen. God bless you and God bless you real good, saints of God. Amen.